Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the RPA Vanguard channel. My name is Andy Menon. This is a highly unconventional video, and I hope that this is going to help uh, many people in uh, dealing uh, with complex uh, functions and expressions in their UiPath apps. So I'm just putting it out there, and I hope, I really do hope that it helps you. Okay, so this is an app that I built for the purposes of another video. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details, but take a look at this expression here. This is a pretty long expression and it does a lot of work. Um, basically what it does is it takes a user input value and compares it to an app variable. And based on the outcome of the comparison, it puts out a message on the, uh, on the app uh, label. If you're going to write something like this, right? It is going to take you a pretty long time to uh, to work with uh, the app editor and come up with a function like this. Um, once you start working with apps, uh, functions and expressions and start getting comfortable with it, uh, you will find yourself writing complex expressions that can do a lot of work in a single expression. But uh, doing that uh, using the point and click mechanism of the resource editor here uh, is going to take some time. Now, personally, myself, I struggle with the closing brackets because I end missing a few brackets. And once I've written an expression as long as this one, I start looking for where the bracket is, uh, whether I missed an opening bracket or a closing bracket or whether I missed a comma or a double quote. So it got really painful for me. So I had to devise another mechanism or another method to write complex expressions uh, like the one you see here. So let me show you how I did it. And I hope that uh, once you practice that for a couple of times, uh, that you notice uh, the advantages of uh, writing your expressions the way I'm going to show you. So this expression that you saw in the, uh, in the App Studio, I wrote this function first in Notepad. And if you have watched some of my previous videos on uh, UiPath apps, um, you will see that I always use notepad first to write my function and or expressions. So I know that this works. Uh, it, is, it is complete in terms of the brackets, uh, the syntax, and it is error free. And I also know what are the variables, the app variables, and also the form field that I'm gonna be working with, right? So I put all of them together and return this very long expression. For the purposes of time, I'm going to build a smaller version of this expression. So this is what I do. I copy the entire plain text expression, go back to App Studio, and I start another set values rule. So here I'm going to just say equal to test result now, and then I put an equal to and I paste plain text expression here. So you're going to see a large number of errors, but don't be alarmed because the App Studio is telling you to replace some of the things that it doesn't recognize with uh, what is available in the resources tab. Okay, this is the first step. So the next thing that you have to come up with is a strategy on how you're going to replace each of the components of this complex expression. Now, personally, I follow uh, this rule. The first thing that I do is I replace all the app variables in this expression. Now, why is that? That is because if I click on this uh, text box here, this value field, it is easier for me to pick out the app variables from this section. It is very easy because all the app variables are in one section. Once I do that, the next step that I follow is I replace any form fields or any form control names next. So if I go up, uh, one of the good things about this resources tab is that if you leave something open, right? for example, if you expand uh, the pages section and then you X out, you get out of the resources tab, and then you come back in, 
you will see that it retains the position of that uh, particular section of the resources tab. Now, in this case, it has left this section expanded. So you can see the advantage. If you want to replace all instances of a text box, you can pick up those text boxes from this section without having to go in between the variable section and the page section. So let us say that I'm going to just follow a random pattern. First, let us say I replace TXT input. I replace it by picking it up from the page section. And if I go to the variable next, I have to scroll down into the variable section, pick up the variable. And then when I go back into the text field again, I have to scroll up and pick up the variable or pick up the text field from this section. So you see you're going up and down, up and down a lot, which is not very productive. So the strategy for me is first, I'm going to replace all app variables. Next, I'm going to replace all form fields. And then I go into the functions, right? So first, let me replace the app variables. So like I said, the resources tab is going to maintain its position based on how you left it the last time. So I'm going to close the pages section because I don't need it. And next, I'm going to do the same thing with functions. I'm going to collapse them as well. And here you can see the app variables is very easily accessible to me now. So I get out and I come back in and I click on the first app variable that I have to replace. And that is this variable here. So I click on this app variable. I see the resources tab appearing. I double click, I go down, I hit delete on my keyboard and then I pick out the variable from the app variable section and I double click. So what happens here is your text form of the variable has now been replaced with the app studio counterpart, which is a variable named var dttm now. Similarly, I'm going to now go to the next instance of that variable, click, double click, scroll down, delete, there's the second variable has been replaced. I'm going to turn my attention to the form input field. So now in this case, I'm going to open this section and I'm going to get out and I'll come back in. And now my pages section is expanded and I know where that form field is, it is here. So again, the same method, click, double click, delete, and double click on the variable. That's one form field replaced. Next. And then finally, the last one here. Good. Now I have replaced all of the form field names as well. So if I scroll down now, you will see that the number of errors have considerably reduced, right? So that leaves us with the functions. So this time what I'm going to do is because I'm going to be replacing all the functions in my expression, I'm going to collapse this page section. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna open up the functions section and I'm going to exit. I'm going to come back in. And this time my function section is expanded. And here again, I'm going to take a look at my functions and I'm going to replace them in the alphabetical sort order of the function names. In this case, concat appears first, if appears next, and is blank appears last, right? So first I'm going to replace concat. Click double click, delete, concat, good. Second instance, good. So I have replaced both concat instances. Next is the if function, click, double click, delete, and 
you have the first instance replaced. Similarly, the second instance. So that's it. I've replaced all of the if functions. Next is is blank. Click, double click, delete. And now you can see that all the errors have disappeared. And that's pretty much it. That is how I write very long and complex expressions and make them work in the UiPath App Studio. So if you practice this for a couple of times, uh, you're going to see that it's going to become very easy for you to write complex expressions outside in an editor of your choice. And then once you confirm that you've written it correctly, you move that into your App Studio and then replace all of the plain text uh, elements of your expressions and functions uh, with the elements in the UiPath App Studio to build a correctly working expression such as the one I demonstrated right here. That is pretty much it for this video and I hope you have fun learning. And if you like the content of this uh, channel, uh, do check out my course on Udemy. Uh, in that course, I teach you how to take uh, the robotic enterprise framework capabilities and integrate it with a larger integration platform across your enterprise. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.